If there's one thing that I think all of us in this room can agree on, it's that we're pretty biased, right? These guys are super biased, and I know this because they're my parents, so no matter how good everyone else's Mac Live talk is, they're always going to think that mine's the best. Thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> but just to clarify, cognitive bias can be defined as a mistake in reasoning, evaluating, remembering, or other cognitive processes often occurring as a result of holding on to one's own personal preferences and beliefs, regardless of contrary information. Humans are inherently biased, and we always have been. Our bias is influenced by many factors, such as where we were born, our age, our race, our gender, our culture, our religion. I could go on forever, but many of the biases that we hold and that people have held in the past have had an immense impact on society, which I think is pretty evident for us as South Africans. But thankfully, over the past few years, conversations and movements have been beginning around the world that are starting to question what we, as a society, are willing to accept. Pertinent issues like race and gender equality are reaching a boiling point, with those who are being discriminated against rising up and demanding to be heard through movements like Black Lives Matter and Me Too. Now, with these and similar movements gaining such traction and influence around the globe, it's understandable that the advertising and marketing industry Follow. Brands are now almost expected to become more representative and inclusive because the power of the consumer would almost be enough to cripple them if they didn't. And some brands have managed to get this right with campaigns like Always is Like a Girl, but unfortunately, bias is not going away anytime soon and it still affects human decision making, which has seen some brands getting it pretty wrong. And perfect examples of this include Kendall Jenner's tone deaf Pepsi ad, Bic finally giving permission to write, releasing their special for her pens, and McDonald's's weak attempt to celebrate Women's Day by turning their M sign upside down. Earlier this year, we even had a debate in class about Johnny Walker jumping on the feminism bandwagon by releasing their limited edition Jane Walker whiskey. But now, there is one thing that is widely believed to be the great equalizer when it comes to human bias in decision making, and this is the AI and its algorithms. Theoretically, machines are supposed to be unbiased, right? You simply input data and out comes objective, unbiased fact. And because of this belief, people are becoming far too trusting of AI and its capabilities. If you asked Siri a question right now on your phone, for example, you would just assume that her answer was accurate and free of bias. But the reality is that AI is created by humans who we really determined are pretty biased. And the data that we're training these tools on is usually historical therefore also biased because it tends to reflect the norms and beliefs of the past. George Fuchel, who's an IBM programmer and a teacher, coined the term garbage in, garbage out, which refers to the fact that regardless of how accurate a program's logic is, the results will be incorrect if the input is invalid. So no matter how good the AI and its algorithms are, if the data it receives contains bias, then the results it produces will more than likely contain that same bias. So unfortunately, both the humans and the companies pioneering the AI industry and the data being used to train it tend to be only inclusive and representative of a very specific group of people, which understandably is not that inclusive or representative at all. Now, I'm not saying that these programmers are sitting in Silicon Valley maliciously coding AI to be racist or sexist, but the construction of an AI tool is an inherently human-driven process. So it's unavoidable that these systems will contain some of the bias of their creators. And examples of this can be seen through many AI developments and innovations over the past few years, where bias has crept in, creating problematic algorithms with often problematic results. Back in 2015, Google's first generation of visual AI identified an image of people of African descent as gorillas. The company quickly apologized and promised to fix the issue, but this just goes to show how AI has the potential to perpetuate inaccurate and offensive stereotypes. Today, Google has not found a way to fix the issue as such, but simply blocked the algorithm from being able to identify gorillas altogether. Now, I know this occurred a number of years ago, and the industry is developing at a rapid pace, but facial recognition technology is starting to become more and more a part of our everyday lives. You might already be using it to log into your phone or your computer, but it's starting to get a little bit more serious than this. In the US, facial recognition technology is starting to be used in law enforcement to identify suspects in crimes. 
but it has been found that it, that it disproportionately implicates African Americans for crimes they may not have committed. Voice recognition technology is another thing becoming more and more integrated into our daily lives. I'm sure many of us have had those moments where we've had to put on really terrible American accents in order to be understood by voice recognition tech. And while this too has advanced to the point where we no longer have to do this, there still are issues with understanding everything that we say. And with AI potentially becoming the interface between people and critical services, we need to ensure that it's fair and inclusive. In the US, voice recognition technology sometimes still struggles to understand African American English, often identifying it as Norwegian or some other foreign language. Now imagine an emergency management system fails to alert new responders to a crisis faced by an African American community because the AI is unable to process the language in a way that a human could. We've also seen examples of gender bias in AI. Amazon recently tried creating an AI recruitment tool that would help with the hiring process. So you simply give it 100 CVs, and it would spit out the top five. But this was abandoned when it was discovered that the tool actually discriminated against women. Now, not because the machine prefers men to women, but because it had been fed 10 years' worth of previously submitted and successful CVs, which, due to the skew in the tech field towards males, were from men. And this data was then meant to recommend who would be the best to hire, but it was found that it would automatically filter out women CVs or those containing the word woman, primarily recommending men for the job. And as this happens, more and more men being recommended for the job, the historical data is basically confirming itself, right? Further entrenching gender bias in the workplace. And then just something else to consider, which I guess brings in the title of my talk in a way, does the fact that virtual assistants like Amazon's Alexa and Apple's Siri, who perform basic tasks, tend to be voiced by polite, subservient females, while more complex problem-solving bots like Microsoft's Einstein and IBM's Watson are voiced by males, further entrenched gender stereotypes? And does the fact that the companies creating these tools tend to be run by men make a difference? Obviously, I have my opinion in this situation, but then again, I am a woman, so I'm biased, but at least I'm aware of it. Now, these are just a few examples, but the point I'm trying to make is that AI doesn't just fail to fix bias, but it threatens to compound it, further reinforcing the prejudices of society, disproportionately affecting women and minorities, and having the potential to lock them out of the world's digital infrastructure or inflict life-changing judgments on them. I think it's safe to say that AI is on the trajectory to becoming a part of our everyday lives. It's no longer just powering voice assistants or chatbots, but it's being delegated to to make decisions that will have a huge impact on our lives. We can no longer be comfortable with the companies and individuals creating AI only taking into account certain faces, voices, and ideologies. In order for us to move forward with AI, we have to ensure that it isn't pulling society backwards. So how do we do this? Firstly, the companies pioneering the AI industry need to ensure that they have diverse teams. So people across all races, genders, cultural and socioeconomic groups who will raise the necessary questions and check assumptions along every step of the way to ensure that AI tools are built upon a spectrum of perspectives. Secondly, they need to ensure that the data sets they're using are larger and more diverse, that are forward thinking and not perpetuating ideals of the past. But now, this is all well and good for the companies and individuals who are pioneering the AI industry. But for us here in this room today, no matter what industry you're in or you're planning to go into, I think the most important thing I want you to take away from this talk is that the ultimate solution and change required to prevent AI from being biased actually lies with us. We need to take the time to acknowledge and constantly reevaluate the biases that we personally hold. We need to have conversations with people who are different than us, and we need to make an effort to see the world from perspectives other than our own. If we can do this, combating our own personal biases, we can hopefully ensure that one day AI will be the undeniable provider of objective fact that we so want it to be. Thank you.